Have you ever seen someone so traumatized and depressed that he wants to run away? He wants to be a different person, so he imagines that he is. He starts fantasizing a fake self in a greener reality, where he's a completely different person with a different name and personality, where only happiness ensues. He thinks of his alter ego so much that he starts hearing his voice, maybe multiple voices even. Each of the voices wants to be heard and some even take control sometimes. This is what's known as dissociative identity disorder and we're gonna see how this along with other psychological phenomena affect this little guy. A boy who has drifted away from his friends. A boy who's so alone and depressed to the point where he starts sleeping. But more importantly, to completely drown himself in his alter ego's world where he goes out on amazing adventures with his friends to defeat his mystical opponents on an unending beautiful journey. That boy is called Omori, or is he? Although his dreams are pretty and comforting, something follows him, keeping him always uneasy. Even when he's having a picnic with his friends, even when he feels happy, something is always there, at least in the back of his mind. Something is talking to him reminding him of his failure to confront his true reality. And the game successfully makes the player feel as if he's in the shoes of Omori as he's taking all the slashing from something. Omori's name is derived from the term Hikikomori. It refers to someone who withdraws themselves from all social life, no matter if it's through living in their mom's basement, playing video games all the time, or through dreaming of their alter ego's life. Someone who's unable to go to work or school just to reject social life and be distant from all people. This form of severe social withdrawal is pretty common in countries like Japan, where people who do that are easily ignored. If you live in a building with 200 apartments, it'll be difficult to get to know your neighbors, never mind having them notice your social withdrawal. I just want to add that it's generally easy to notice when men take on this lifestyle, but in most cultures, females don't exactly have to socialize as much as men, so it's seen as okay if a woman is all locked up in her house. They'll say that she became a housewife or that she's taking care of her kids. Such cultural constructs make it easy for Hikikomori women to go unnoticed. I hear a knock on the door, a knock that disturbs my peaceful dream and calls me back to reality. It's my old friend. He hears I'm moving soon and tells me that my old friend group wants to see me. I go with him. We view old photos that our femboy cameraman friend took. Now this femboy guy is a very essential character in the game, but I don't talk about him not to spoil much. Anyways, the pictures are nice, but I've had my fun. The world disappoints me. I want to go back to my dream. So I go home and sleep. The door disturbs me again the next day. I don't answer. My friends knock on the door again and again every day because they found out that I'm moving away soon. The world is inviting me. It's given me my friends and my reality back, it only asks for me to rejoin society. But my Hikikomori alter ego pulls me back, he tells me that I'm not built for it, that I can't do it. He reminds me of his friends and that they're enough. Do I accept him or do I answer the door? Now personally I did not answer that bitch ass door, fuck outta here Kel, I like the dream better. I had chosen a route in the game, I became my alter ego, lived happily in my dream, fought the OP boss and somehow won. The end, or at least I wished. Something crept up on me, it showed up occasionally and casually sent shivers down my spine. <sighs> Average psychological horror gaming session. This made me realize that this greener grass was indeed rotten, chemically enhanced and fucked up just like the fruits you get from your 7-Eleven. Even when I was genuinely happy because of something wholesome in the game, I always felt anxious at the back. Anxious. anxious. My mind. Anxious at the back. My mind. I never realized which world was Omori's and which world was Sunny's, or who was the alter ego and who was the main persona. Although the game does give big hints that, hey, this is Sunny's world and he's the actual human, but he's schizophrenic so you can't really tell. But Omori's world is so wholesome and nice, I always thought it was the character's actual world. I mean, the game was called Omori, not Sunny. That's why I always went back to Omori's world and preferred it. It was a happy green world, yet still unconsciously uneasy. I was always scared of something, so in true Hikikomori fashion, Omori and I rejected that something and threw it to the trash of my brain, my unconsciousness. However, my alter ego made sure to haunt me with it, to pull it out of the trash and show me its shadow. The shadow of something my brain kept in the trash for so long to protect me. Now would you want your brain to break the shadow and just show you what haunts you? Break the illusion and see your PTSD? Or would you prefer to have it hidden, to stay protected, as Sunny did in Omori's world? 
This isn't just a video game thing, by the way. This is an actual process called dissociation that the brain goes through to protect itself from trauma. What it does is it just deletes traumatic memories and someone can forget about like a murder or abuse till they're 40 or something. And the thing is the memory can be remembered along with the trauma. And then they gotta get a therapist at like 50 and it really gets complicated. The brain is really smart yet really fucking stupid, you guys. It's like if, if you're gonna forget something bad, why remember it at all? Wouldn't the world be amazing if we all just forgot our PTSD or if you just forget that you have dementia? Similar thing happened to me with this game, honestly, because it was really traumatic and depressing and I forgot all that. I wish I were joking, but in the writing of this video, I realized I forgot 99.99% of the trauma that this game gave me and I had to Google it all and remember it. Now you could say that I'm just forgetful of the games I played, but I'm gonna say it's dissociation to make it look cool. <laughs> If we start seeing depressing shit at school, we're done for as a society, honestly. In the game, Omari's colorful world is called Headspace. As I explained before, you can choose to go back to the real world or stay in Headspace. The longer you stay in Headspace, the more fun you'll have in the game, the more you'll stay protected, and the less you'll have to do your mom's boring chores and meet your actual old friend group. I chose the route of blissful ignorance, the route of dreaming, and I found that I make similar decisions in real life too, which give me a boost of dopamine and bliss at the moment, but are ultimately bad decisions that I regret. It's kind of similar in the game, if you choose to go to your reality and confront your actual friends instead of dream of fun adventures with them, you'll get to treat your trauma as you defeat your phobias and find out what's that something that's bothering you so much. Although it is more mentally draining, as the anxiety that was in the back of your head comes out to the front as you fight these bosses that visualize your phobias, but at the same time, it's so much easier to just get it done with. And by the way, when I say that the anxiety is gonna come out to the front of your mind, I don't only mean Omori's mind here because the game really makes you one with him the whole time, so it actually gives you an uneasy mind fuck of a shivery spine. I've discovered that people are often faced with similar scenarios and the choices of blissful ignorance and painful truth disguised as optimism and realism. Or as the optimist would call it, pessimism. The realist approach is to expect reality. The reality is usually bad, but you'd be ready and undisappointed when it happens if it happens. The optimist approach is to hope for the best to raise morale and get rid of worry. This creates ignorance which may lead to a delusional view of whatever predicament you're facing. When looked at logically, the optimist approach feels childish and careless. Maybe because it is. The realist approach feels harsh. But it's because that's the actual way reality is and maybe you should face it instead of run away from it. Now although precarious, ignorance shouldn't be completely dismissed. Anything can be good in wise moderation. Plato's an ancient Greek philosopher, everyone knows who he is. He wrote the allegory of the cave. In that allegory, there are prisoners who are stuck looking at only one wall of a cave for their whole lives. They see shadows of puppets casted from the other side of the cave that they're blind to. Although the prisoners' lives only have some shadows on a cave wall, they were accepting of that, that was enough for them, they were happy. It's all they knew and because of that, they were satisfied with it. Now if they knew what the world had for them, the shadows would no longer be enough for them. They'd want to break free and escape, and even if they had absolutely no means to escape, they'd never be accepting and happy again. Although that could lead to them somehow achieving the impossible and biting through the cave with their teeth and getting out, it can also not. In this case, you should definitely have some willful type of ignorance. Socrates ignorance. Socrates. Which is also called the Socrates wisdom. Ironically, it's a type of knowledge as well as ignorance. It refers to accepting what you don't know and living with it. So if some problems are out of your control, it's best to accept that you can't do anything about them and move on. Fix the problems that you can and ignore your unfixable problems. Because here in this case, ignorance is actually bliss as it's helpful. Socrates, who is Plato's teacher, says, I know only one thing, that I know nothing. Sonny's bliss in headspace was a result of his ignorance, but he indulges it too much. It leads him to shutting out his friends because he thinks that it's best for him. But he doesn't know that his alter ego, Omori, would consume him if he stays like that. If Sunny doesn't indulge his ignorance and faces the truth, he goes through a lot of pain, but in the end, finds peace in a shocking way before moving out of town. This game takes a hefty toll on mental health, so do not play this game. I repeat, do not play this game if you have mental issues such as depression and anxiety, because this game will multiply your issues a thousandfold, I'm not even joking. Otherwise, Ori is a beautifully written game that takes you on a mental journey as you try to find your friend Basil. The multiple endings of the game are each crazier than one another, so if you do complete this game, I recommend you google other endings to understand the full scope of the artful story. Thank you.